Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to each and every one of you for joining the summit. Uh, my name is Nick Elwa, and I want you to understand the work we're going to be doing today as young people and how exciting that work and how impactful that work is in bettering our communities. So just to give you context, so the Anti-Xenophobia School Summit aims to change behaviors and attitudes of the youth, all right? It aims to eradicate and lessen cases where people are voicing out their frustration about certain things in a very violent way, in a way that shows that there's issues that are on the ground, okay? So it also aims to enhance social cohesion between local and migrant learners, as well as community members at large. We want to incite values of empathy, unity, and peace. And that is the main, the main objectives as to why we're having this um, summit today. So as you all know, in South Africa, there's a lot of inequality already existing. There's inequality based on social class, which is who's employed, who's not employed, and who has money, who's, who doesn't have money. There's inequality based on who's from South Africa, who's not from South Africa. There's inequality based on race, who's, what color are you, and what, what kind of privileges do you get afforded based on your color? So those are the things we'll be grappling on on today's um, summit. So the socioeconomic issues that lie in South Africa, today as the learners, we'll be looking at how those issues could be so solved or how we could recommend a solution for those issues and how we could change and shift behaviors and attitudes at the schools we exist in as well as in our communities. So that is all for me, guys. I hope we have a fruitful session and I hope that we were able to learn from each other and we were able to express each other as many times as possible. And we are able to just have, be the voice of young people that are out there as well as our own voices in today's um, summit. Okay, have a good day. Without, um... Further ado, I would like to introduce our first guest speaker. Um, his name is Yu Nyakabo, AKA Foreign. So Foreign is a 23-year-old trap soul artist, um, medical student and poet. Um, he's originally from Harare, Zimbabwe, and he grew up in um, Botswana, South Africa and Zambia. Living in different countries has shaped, has shaped him greatly, and he explores the many facets of his identity and passion for humanity through his music. I think we all know that music is a powerful means of communication with anybody and everybody, um, regardless of your background. So, um, to quote Foreign, we are all connected and music is the way in which we can expand on that connection. It is who we are. Uh, without further ado, let's give him a warm welcome and um, Foreign will bless us with two of his songs and a small speech. So um, over to you. Hi, everybody. Hope you guys are good. I'm good this side and I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I thought like today I come through and um, I just speak to you about what, it's, what it is to be you and um, the way that I understand relationships, you know, the way that I understand us as different people and um, despite our differences, you know, but pretty much exactly the same, you know. And um, growing up, I've come to realize that, I've come to see that through my different interactions, like, um, because the fact that I grew up in different areas, I've got to experience different people, right? different stereotypes uh, and tackle through all the, the myths as well associated with living in any area and, and being because I mean it happens to each of us in a different way you know but the concept is still the same so um, a lot of the times as we know with all these migrant stories whether or not you're watching it on tv and it's a, a kid from Mexico or it's right close to your home, it's a kid from Zim or the Congo who's in your country, you know, all these things, uh, they're different push and pull factors, right? That uh, bring us to certain uh, 
places, scenarios, and just life. You know, sometimes people just want to go and live somewhere different, you know, and experience a different culture. And uh, of course, it's always about um, bettering your life, you know, so that you can be more secure. But at times, it's not always that people are driven by uh, matters out of their control. You know, sometimes people just want to live an experience different, you know. So I think there are misconceptions at times when people hear of, um, you know, the idea of a foreigner, somebody coming into your place of being and um, wanting to, uh, you know, the stereotype, limits, uh, limiting your resources and all your, all your plots and all your plays and all these things. Man, it's just like, what I've learned and what I've realized as well is that uh, as much as social media is such a powerful driving tool uh, for such positivity, it also can really twist the narrative. You know, it's unfortunate because what we always see on TV as well is uh, mostly all the negative, you know, um, there is there's a lot of good happening, right? There's a lot of harmony, there's a lot of peace, there's a lot of joy that's actually happening, but it isn't, you know, displayed. And then people just take whatever they're given and they run with that narrative, you know, uh, and it twists almost their sense of uh, uh, belonging. But I think once you actually get on the ground, man, and you start moving around for yourself, you start to see people for who they are. And that's the beauty of it, right? So obviously, each one of us has, has faced some sort of discrimination, whether it's about the way that you look, the way that you sound or the way that you may appear to be you know uh each one of us have have that in common discrimination it is what it is but it's how we deal with it and how we actually choose to see it to be you know um no matter who you are foreigner or not it affects the child in in a way that um that they do things reason they, the way that they reason or see things and so when they go off into the world, it's either they're going to be spewing out a whole lot of negative energy or positivity, right? Your environment. And I was, and I'm blessed enough to have a mom who uh, shifted my focus. You know, it's not to focus on what people are saying or doing uh, to try to get to you, you know, or to try to uh, put you down. You can always turn that around and make it something. So I use that as a driving force to push through everything in life, you know? And it fueled up for a lot of the things that I, uh, that I did do, a lot of the things that I'm doing now. I mean, right now I'm, I'm studying medicine, guys. It's just something that I wanna do, and something that nobody uh, pressured me to do. I love challenges and I love human beings. I love the way that we are. You see, the fact is, uh, if you don't move to a certain place, you always have an idea of what people are until you get there, right? So the fact that I was moving around and seeing how similar everybody was, uh, I wanted a part in that, uh, in, in spreading that knowledge, you know, in a, and in a way, it became like a philosophy of mine. I found medicine, I found humanity there. And I was like, what better way to give back to my environment you know, than to lay a helping hand in preserving it, right? And human beings were a big part of it. And um, another driving force was, of course, music, right? We are all gifted with many talents, every single one of us. If you haven't discovered any of yours yet, don't give up, keep looking, bro. You know, I'm still looking for different things because we're, you know, we're beings of, we're, we're multifaceted human beings, you know, and, I fell across music as I've always loved music, but I decided to take it seriously uh, and head on uh, when I just started with med school. <clears throat> when I was in when I was in China, 2016, 2017, that's when I decided I was like, yo, this is what I also want to do because I no longer had competitive sports and all these things. And then I found it to be a voice, man, a medium. It was at first it was just a hobby, you know. Uh, something to keep me busy, another challenge, something that I could already do, sing, but I hadn't tried to, you know, tell my own stories through music. And uh, when I just, when I started to do that, uh, I got the response, the feedback from 
not necessarily, yeah, of course, how it sounded, yeah, it sounded dope, but like what was being said, you know, the message behind it. And um, I started to dig deeper into the idea of music and what else it is used for, what else it has been used for, music for everything, worship, you know, uh, what, whatever moods we are, uh, a lot of the times it can be stirred by music, you know, that's, that's who we are, you know, that's how we are connected. Even if you don't understand a certain language, just by hearing music, you can feel the energy and that will actually do something to you. You know, that's how powerful music is. And I wanted to be deliberate with it as well. So I wanted to not only tell my story uh, about my journey, uh, but talk about uh, the experiences of others. Because when you meet people and you interact with them, not only are you able to share your story uh, with them, and allow them to experience yours, but you get to experience theirs. It's an exchange, you know, it's an equal exchange, but you always have to be open to that possibility. And so, yeah, I fell in love with music and it also saved me out of, it you know, saved me from going into a really dark hole at some point because my dad stopped working in 2016. My dad didn't work for two, three years and uh, my dad's the sole provider in our family. And I just started with university. I actually had to pull out for like two years before I got back into school. And um, you always look for something to keep you busy, right? And this was a way out for me. You know, I worked super hard. I think I would write about two, three songs a day and record them two for two months straight, almost every day. But um, what I'm trying to get at is it saved me, yeah? And not only did it do that for me, but for other people as well, when I speak to people and the interactions that they've had with some of the songs that I have, and um, it's opened up my eyes to all the different possibilities, man. This isn't the only medium to do it. You know, this isn't the only medium to voice out and speak, not only for myself, you know, or, or for the voiceless, but this is a way, this is a medium, you know. So whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you want to do, um, be open to an interaction with not only yourself, but with the universe, man, and people, because uh, human beings, we're animals, you know, and we need uh, that openness, you know? So whatever it is that you wanna do, just at the back of your mind, just keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that in mind, I promise you, it'll take you a long, a long, a long way because you will always, I feel, live a purposeful life. So wherever you are, whatever part of the journey you are, keep going and keep using your voice. I mean, the fact that you guys are here right now it shows how you're all about change, which is amazing, you know? Uh, and I would say, keep, keep fighting for it. Keep doing your best to try to educate those around you, you know, and um, those you meet on a daily basis because there will always be a domino effect. That's how life works. You know, somebody says something to somebody somewhere down the line for me to be able to say this. You know what I mean? And that's how powerful um, our line of communication actually is. So uh, I guess for my part and then also being my experiences and being a foreigner have been, have been beautiful. I don't want to lie to you guys. It's been amazing. You know, uh, I mean, besides the fact of it being who I am, it's actually weird for me to be in a single space for a long period of time. I feel like I should always be moving, you know, but in my experience, it's been pretty awesome. Um, what I'm trying to say is that there's been more positive energy, you know, and more, po and more positivity about everything and everyone. So, yeah, guys, I guess that's pretty much what all I have to say. Uh, thank you for the time, the platform, uh, to be able to speak to you guys. And yeah, once again, thank you for having me. Uh, I would have really loved to sing for you guys, but like I said, <laughs> I've got this, I genuinely have uh, laryngitis and struggling a little bit. But if you guys wanted, I could play you a song. Now that was amazing. I really, I couldn't have asked for a better um, opening speech. So many great uh, aspects. And we do Aye. have a bit of time. So please uh, play us one or two songs before we go into the question answer part. Um, if you Aye. have any questions or comments, um, please write them in the chat so that we can also ask them 
um, afterwards. But for now, a few songs would be amazing. Okay, awesome. You guys will just have to let me know if you can hear anything that me play. But this one's called Tripping. Make it mean whatever you want. Can you guys hear it? Okay. one of my songs yeah that's one of my babies it's called tripping it's from december actually december 2020 and then i recently released a new one actually uh it's called my uh i dropped it last week friday uh it's gotten some pretty good response here in zambia that's like my debut uh single uh it's really exciting so yeah, it's called my duet, guys. It's a different vibe. I like it. You know, people like it. So hopefully you guys do too. Yeah, listen in. Say you want to know me, but you can't run. Heart is in the ocean, but you can't love. Oh, I go through the motions, but you can't run. 
Oh, you wanna know me, but you can't stop. Yeah. Make it fair, you will take them. Are you gay? Are you play? Cause I see you from the pain. You will take them. You will take them. Make it fair, you will take them. Are you gay? Are you play? Cause I see you from the pain. You will take I am no waste man, Johnny. Do you want me or be wasting money? Don't only see from the waste of money. My heart to leave from the waste that's Johnny. You in the movie, the ship to show me. Take this to my let me also shorty. I only feel from the firm that funny. But you got to feel what that you do, baby. Money babe, you will take. Are you gay? Oh, you play? Cause I see you on the page. You will take. You would say, but you may, you would say, are you gay? Are you play? Cause I see you from the pain. You would say, he said that he's in the back, and Johnny. I never seen what I seen here, Johnny. You got to feel like a 10 star baby. I got to think for the race now, Johnny. You got to be mine and end this, Johnny. I had to leave from the face, then Johnny. You and them would be the ship this short. I know you feel what I'm feeling now, Johnny. Let you play, you would take. Are you gay? Are you play? Cause I see you from the pain. You would take, you would take. Let you play, you would take. Are you gay? Are you play? Cause I see you from the pain. You would take, you would take. yeah that's it guys i think that's all we have time for today as well so yeah thank you thank you for the time for the platform grammy quality thank you thank you thank you that was so great i love the music i really do and i can see from the chat that so many other people also feel the vibe and um, yeah thank you guys wow <laughs> um what i would like to know i mean you grew up in different countries and you said it shaped your identity in a great way and that you also use music to um, connect people and to reflect on your own experiences. Um, so for those of us here that also love music, I know we also have some upcoming artists here. Um, oh. what, <laughs> what advice would you um, give them to really like believe in, in their art and use it as a way of um, communicating uh, what is it like to be you know um, a foreigner in the country or just um, um, you know using these creative means it doesn't necessarily have to be music we also have poets here we have dancers we have different kind of creative talent um, what would you what would you say to to us who of those that are not at your stage yet but that would love to maybe um, go that route all right uh for anybody who wants to take any creative direction uh in using your voice uh i would say go for it and um don't necessarily do things with don't always do things with uh with the objective of getting to some place like you know how people come through for example you know, I do music and like, I'm doing this for a Grammy type of thing. It would be nice. I don't want to lie to you. That would be a dream. If I just got a Grammy, wow. But I'm not trying to work for that, you know, because that I, I miss the in-between, you know, I miss, I genuinely, I would miss the journey. You know what I mean? So uh, whatever it is that you're doing, and if you want to pursue like, you know, a creative, creative direction, do it. I say, just do it uh don't think too much about it as well and um there's i know people will say well but there's every somebody else is doing something like that there's competition so to speak i know it's cliche to say but the only competition is yourself right it's what you did the day before you know and you're trying to improve on that you know so it's, you're just trying to be better and uh not only be better do better for yourself but for other people as well you know, so um, in, 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 in my experience, like, um, that's what I've always done. You know, just try to 
do things for uh, for liberation, man, for me, for fun, you know, for the experience, for the journey for others. You won't go wrong. So, yeah, go for it. That's what I would say. Thank you. Yes, guys, go for it. Um, I think that's really great advice to not think too much about it. Just if you enjoy yeah. it, if it gives you joy, you're on the right path and um, you never know. But if it already gives you joy doing it, that's um, already quite, uh, actually, it's, that's the most important thing in touching yeah. people around you. So now um, it's time for our testimonials from our school club learners. And we chose two people to, um, to speak to us today. So basically the testimonials will be two learners sharing their experience on um, migrating and arriving here in South Africa and how this experience has shaped them. So the first speaker is uh, Farai. She's 16 years old, originally from uh, Zimbabwe, and she arrived in South Africa at the age of 11. Um, Farai is, is, as she already said, she's this year's president of the Africa Unite School Club in Masbambane in Cryfontaine. And besides her commitment to the club, Farai is also um, a singer, songwriter, dancer, model, and actress, very creative. And on top of that, she is also one of the radio hosts with the Africa Unite Youth Radio. So um, let's give Farai a warm welcome and please um, make sure your mics are off so that we can all hear her um clearly so Farai are you ready yes can you guys hear me yes perfect okay so um I moved to South Africa when I was 11 yeah I was 11 years old and when I got here it was during the term two of school and so I was told that um it was too late for me to get into another school in term two so I had to stay at home for like six months. And it was not easy because I watched all my other peers go to school and just knowing that I'm supposed to be at school and I'm not at school just made the whole experience very, it wasn't easy. So I, because I was a child back then, it was easy to pass time, just pass time playing. And I actually started eating a lot during that period of time. And then the next year, I applied for fifth grade and I got enrolled at Holy Cross Primary School, which is in Woodstock. Um, my first day of school was interesting because when I got there, it was all very, it was so different for me because they were speaking a different language. I was in a new place. I was seeing all these different people. But luckily for me, the school was an English school, so I could learn all my lessons properly. But I had to catch up with everything. And luckily my peers, they also spoke English very well. So I managed to make friends. And so from the fifth grade to the seventh grade, it was, it was very nice. The problems started when I enrolled for high school. Um, but before that, at the end of my seventh grade, my family moved to Cryfontaine. I had stayed in Paris. So I had to take a taxi from fifth grade to seventh grade just to get to school. And it was, different and difficult because I was not used to traveling alone but then I managed to get through it and so in the last year of my seventh grade my family moved to Cryfontaine and to get to school I had to take either two taxis or a train which was exhausting because I had to wake up at like 5 a.m and I'd come back home at five or six at night which gave me little time to rest or to study but I managed to pass my seventh grade final luckily so um, my grade eight, I enrolled at Masbambani Secondary School, which is like 10 minutes away from my house, which was a relief because traveling was not something I was even thinking of doing again. So grade eight, Masbambani School is an English school, but most of the teachers teach in Isikosa and I constantly had to tell them to translate until I got to a point where I stopped because I had to do it every day. And I had to force myself to learn Isikosa so that I can understand my lessons more, so that I can feel less of an outsider. And the eighth grade was brutal because constantly I had to defend myself verbally, people calling me names and people just being like making unnecessary comments, things that they shouldn't even be talking about. They just had to throw it in my face. 
and so it turned it turned me into this mean vindictive person because i just constantly had to defend myself i felt like i was constantly a target and that was my life from grade 8 up into the 10th grade and right now i'm in grade 10 and still nothing has changed the difference is now i can communicate with people in their language but i still constantly feel like i don't belong here you feel like an outsider most of the time and i shouldn't have to feel that way because we're all africans here doesn't matter what color i am i should feel welcome no matter where i am but i constantly feel like that from my peers from the elders from the teachers doesn't matter what age they are but it's just the mindset that they have and it's if i were to get a chance to just leave i would definitely leave that's how far and how deep it has cut me and i'm pretty sure my other peers as well i think sharing and evidence are also listening to this they can relate to exactly what i'm saying because that is the life that we have it must be a mini secondary school thank you thank you for i um I really want to express um the my gratitude to Farai to to share her story um with us it's a vulnerable space to to speak openly about the experiences that you had and the feelings that you um that you go through so uh, thank you so much I can see um quite a few people related to your story um so I want to acknowledge that um okay so now I want to introduce uh, Shalom Mapiki She's the current Minister of Sports, Culture and Entertainment at Portland High School um, in Mitchell's Plain. She is a very talented poet and also a radio host with the Africa Unite Youth Radio, um, originally from Zimbabwe and um, now living in Cape Town. And she is going to share her story um, now. So Shalom, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Mira. Great. So the floor is yours. Okay. My name is Shaloma Piki. I am 16 years old in grade 11 at Portland High. I came to South Africa at the age of 2. Then had to go back to Zim when my mother died. I lived with my aunt in Zim. I then returned to South Africa at the age of 4 with my aunt. She looked after me while my father was at work. One day my aunt who was like a mother to me had to leave and start her own life. I then went to primary school. even though i could speak tosa and english it was hard fitting in constantly having uh, having to deal with being mocked for my forefather's genes that made me look not look south african filled with the fear of sticking out like a bad so every time the teacher would mention zimbabwe going home and trying not to be too south african at school trying to be not to be too zimbabwean i felt like i was living a double life not knowing who i am who i am really felt like i was losing myself in between all the pretending and trying to fit in hoping that my mother tongue would not somehow find its way out of the bars i put it in going home without a mother to tell me that everything would be okay and that she was proud of how far i had come this one day my closer friends were talking about xenophobia in my presence how foreigners should leave just leave south africa for So they assured me that I was one of them and they didn't want me gone. I'm still filled by with the fear of being rendered an orphan by xenophobia every time my father walks out the door. But I wouldn't change a thing because through trying to find myself through all that I found my one true redeemer, the only place of refuge there is, the Lord my God. But if I could change something, I would ask that each and every foreign girl and boy out there who came from a poor country to find education, to find hope, not that, not have to go through the pain and isolation I went through. I wish that I could hold the hand of each and every one whose heart was filled with hate after losing someone they loved to xenophobia. I wish that each and every one like me didn't have to apologize for being them selves. Thank you. Wow. Wow, that was amazing. I mean, the way you um you spoke about your experiences so touching and um well presented. I think we really felt, you know, what is it, what is it like to um to be in your shoes? At least I felt it. I hope other people felt it too. Um okay. So um I would now like to go to our next guest speaker um Carolyn Mujinga. Um 
She is an 18 year old matriculant and head girl at Kensington High School who was born in South Africa, but true refugee parents. Um, Carolyn is a passionate poet and youth activist who speaks up against, against injustices and right infringement. Um, and her, she has a, a passion for freeing um, Palestine and Palestinians. So um, earlier this year, she, she joined the self program and took part in um, our poetry competitions. And then during refugee months, we had, we called on um, refugees to write letters to um, the president or different ministers to express what are they going through. And Carolyn did that, but she did more than that. She also started a petition uh, where she called on um, Home Affairs to create a, a matric ID or citizenship helpline for South African born refugees in South Africa. And um, she's now gonna explain how this all came about and um, how it uh, grew and um, the floor is yours, Caroline. As Mira introduced me, yes, I'm Caroline Mujinga. Um, I'm 18 years old. I was born in South Africa to refugee parents, Congolese refugee parents. So my family, my mom is from DRC. Um, for the past two years, yeah, since I was 16, I've been anticipating the year I turned 18 to apply for citizenship because I was born in South Africa. And um, if you're born to, if you're born in South Africa to refugee parents, you can apply for citizenship once you turn 18. It's a requirement. So um, I was keen on applying for citizenship once I turned 18. So once the clock struck 12 and it was 2021, I started drafting email to pro bono lawyers in Cape Town to assist me in my citizenship application. However, due to COVID-19, the immigration office at Home Affairs closed. They suspended services, including processing new citizenship applications. So I could not apply for citizenship. And um, I remember, quite frankly, watching the news um, one evening, and they mentioned that if you're in matric, you can apply for your ID. They will make sure that you get your ID, because if you're in matric, you need your ID for many different things, as applying for university, writing your NEC, and applying for bursaries and so forth. So I thought that this provision from Home Affairs was also for us South African-born refugees to apply for citizenship. However, this was not the case. They only made provision for South Africans to apply for citizenship, which means which left many others in my place and I in limbo, unable to apply for university, unable to, unable to apply for bursaries. Like right now, a lot of university applications are um, the closing date are drawing near some in August and some in September. And I still have no ID no ID number whatsoever, no form of identification than an unabridged birth certificate. And I remember it was on the 20th of June, um, Mira, or I think it's Mira, she sent a letter, an invitation to refugees to write letters or local South Africans to write letters as well to refugees. And so um, I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna write a letter. I think that time, it was when they extended the due date. So I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to write a letter. And then I think it was like 10 p.m. or something. I just thought to myself, I was like, um, why the, what can I accompany? What can I accompany with this letter? What can I, um, can I add to this letter to evoke some kind of emotion to whoever I'm writing it to? Then I was like, okay, cool. I could um, create a petition so that, I could petition to Home Affairs as well as spread awareness about my situation because it's not the first, I'm not the first person to go through this, to go through the struggle of getting proper documents. I'm not the first. And even before COVID-19, to get proper documents in South Africa as a refugee, as a foreigner, is very difficult. It's like the chances of you getting proper documents is so small, unless you do some corrupted way or whatsoever, they won't give you proper documents so easily. And now with COVID, it's exasperating, like the process is completely difficult. So I created a petition online and right now the petition has about more than um, 24,000 signatures on the petition and it's adding on, many signatures are adding on each and every day, people are signing. A lot of people have come to me, a lot of people have contacted me online, um, people like um, the parliament, one of the parliament members, 
um, most 2019. I've been on um, a lot of um, about two articles were written on my story. Two articles have my story, and I had an interview with. Sorry, I'm speaking too fast. I had an interview with the spokesperson last week Monday, and um, the spokesperson of former says. And before that, the Friday, the 8th of July, he released, um, they released a statement saying that if you are a refugee, a child of a refugee, a dependent of a refugee, you can apply for your refugee ID, but you have to have your refugee status to have that refugee ID. So, which shows that um, my petition is gaining volume because they created that statement so quick to say something, just to show that they are doing something at home affairs. I think it's quite unfair that the immigration office is closed because a lot of immigrants, a lot of, a lot of us, a lot of people in my place need proper documents to apply for proper jobs. So I also think that this um, situation of getting proper documents is the internal xenophobia at home affairs. You know, a lot of people have said that um, when they go to home affairs, they are met with the xenophobic encounters and animosity, hostility, just to go and renew your paper or to apply for a certain thing. You are told to come the next day, they will call you, all this and all that. It's, it's quite exhausting as foreigners to go to home affairs because you're met with this, this unfriendly like nature. It's, it's completely unfair. Um, the internal xenophobia that that's at home affairs and how they treat you and how they treat us um, as refugees. And um, also growing up, um, I never quite really experienced xenophobia, xenophobia firsthand, like first, no, not really, I haven't. But I know of people who have, I've heard of people, close family members who have experienced xenophobia, um, being thrown out of a train, getting attacked, it's completely, it's, it's disgusting, um, considering the fact that as um, like South Africa, apartheid South Africa, um, there were many African countries that, even though we were all under colonial power, there were many African countries who um, stood hand and put our hearts together and we sanctioned against apartheid South Africa. We boycotted against South African, um, against South the South African government at that time. Even though our governments were cahoots with the apartheid government as people, because the government is separate from the people. As people, we boycotted and we sanctioned, we called for sanctioning of apartheid South Africa. And we also thought that since South Africa represented the epitome of democracy in Africa, um, South Africa is more develop, developing than any other African country. We thought that we could also partake in this. And it's quite sad that we are treated with animosity and alienated, feel isolated, feel as if we need to compromise who we are just to fit in. Uh, I think a way to um, combat this, just add everything quickly, is um, to promote intersectionality between ourselves, open mindedness, and um, love paramount love so um yeah that's all i have to say for now i don't think i've left anything out. But yes thank, thank you for giving me the platform <laughs> absolutely i mean uh, you, you deserve the platform everyone does and you um you deserve it also because you're such an inspiring story for for all of us so uh now we have our last uh, guest speaker, who is uh, Sasaki Lewa, and um, oh, I currently did not write your last name. Maybe you can you can introduce yourself properly when I give the mic to you. Uh, he is part of the self group since uh, I think March um, 2021. He's the winner of the human rights uh, poetry competition. Um, he is besides being um, an outstanding poet and performer. He is also a writer and aspiring author. Um, Sassy is currently located in East London, where he is homeschooling and doing matric um, with the hope of studying medicine. Um, Sassy is a proud metrosexual feminist, pan Africanist, LGBTQI ally, GBV activist, and a lay counselor. So we have very um, active people here. I love that. 
Um, Sassy will share a poem as well as a letter of um, empathy. And um, yeah, so Sassy, there you go. Hi, everyone. My name is Sassy Gelelo Machayana, but you can call me Sassy. Um, I wrote a poem and it's titled Motherland that and I'm also going to read my empathy letter. So I'm going to start with my poem, then read my empathy letter and the poem goes as follows. Embedded in the glow of my mel melanin skin as the glare of the sun kisses its essence are roots and heritage that I inherited from my ancestors. It's a privilege that I find pride in as it profoundly tells the story that I share with all the people of the sun, my African brothers and sisters. It's in the richness of our roots, the depth in our lineage, the link in our spirituality and the connection to the motherland that serves the efficacy that we are one. Tribes upon tribes ascend into a bloodline of royalty, but I guess we already knew of how our motherland and descendants gifted us with crowns we now call hair and power we now call melanin. I call upon all six regions of the motherland descendants, the Southern and Day I name Angola, Botswana, Lesotho, Madagascar, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, Swaziland, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, of the Northern and Day I name Angola, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Sudan, and Tunisia, of the Western and Day I name Benin, Bakafaso, Cameroon, Ghana, Liberia, Mali, Nigeria, Ghana, etc., of the Eastern and Day I name Burundi, Ipito. Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Ten Tanzania, Uganda, etc. Of the Central and Day I name Central African Republic, the DRC, Congo, Gambia, and Gabon, not leaving out those of the African diaspora. May the spirit of Ubuntu live through our hearts, penetrate through our souls, and infiltrate the domes of our minds as we carry the legacy, lineage, and heritage of our forefathers and foremothers through our veins. May our ancestors help us rise as a continent, as the punches and jabs of social and systemic oppression, poverty, and other major social economic issues deprive us from striving to becoming a powerful continent we're meant to be. Until then, it's up to us to recognize the potential it has and the influence of our history. Until then, it's up to us to recognize this diversity, yet recognize our common interest in making our motherland a better place for all. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to read my empathy letter. So it goes as follows. To my fellow African brothers and sisters, I can only imagine the conditions that you are living in and, can, and I can never wish living a place you consider a home because of circumstances you can't help on anyone. I'm sorry the world doesn't realize the severity of the drastic changes and traumas you might be experiencing. No one deserves the emotional turmoil, the mental scrutiny and exhaustion. The amount of empathy I have for you is one of the reasons why I find it very vital to educate people about the importance of treating everyone equally with love, care, and with compassion as we don't know what they are going through. I know we live in a world where Africans and people of African descendants are often mistreated in brutal ways. And I know having to experience what you're experiencing doesn't make it any better. I know uh, we have a lot of issues we as a society need to act on and change. I know there are a lot of stigmas that need to stop as no one chooses to be a refugee, to be a person of color, to have certain traits attached to our identities, but we should embrace the depth of our identities and the richness of our roots. That, among other reasons, is what I hope will keep us from not giving in to despair. We can only embrace our roots and identities if we embrace the spirit of Ubuntu among ourselves and fight the social and systemic stigmas of racism, colorism, sexism, and xenophobia. My heart aches at the idea of having your childhood and other aspects of your life rubbed before your eyes and it aches that you are in need for a better place you can call a home. I hope and I trust your ancestors and God will pave liberation and a better life as living in a state of depravity and basic needs can be draining in every realm of one's being. I might not know when and how things will change for the better, but they will. At least I hope they will with all of my heart. Stay safe and remember, you matter and I respect your bravery. With love, Sasi Machayan. Well done to you, Sassy. And I now want to give it over to Nikewa to um, facilitate the last part of this 
amazing event. Wow, 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 wow. I'd like to say thank you for each and every one of you for taking part in the summit. Thank you for engaging in the summit. Thank you to the organizers for their efforts. Um, and thank you so much for sharing um, your personal stories and sharing your opinions and sharing these recommendations of how we can improve our communities. I do hope that each and every one of you have taken down the recommendations, mental note or you're writing down and you're applying them in your community, in your school, and we are driving change in the spaces we exist in. Otherwise, guys, have a wonderful Saturday and thank you so much for being here. Maybe we can all unmute ourselves and just say bye. 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 Bye.